Good evening, everyone. Welcome you all to the seventh inaugural lecture series organized by Faculty of Graduate Studies, University of Marburg. To deliver the introduction of our today's speaker, Professor Virajini Medical Karnataka, I cordially invite Vidya Jyoti, Emeritus Professor Milan Nibanda Silva, former dean, Faculty of Architecture. Hi, everyone. Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Dean of the Faculties, Head of the Department, Directors, Distinguished Guests, Friends. I'm here to give a short introduction to Professor Priyanka Virajini Madhagadhar Kamaratna. I consider it as great pleasure and honor, as you know, in all civilizations, mother tongue of the civilization, consolidates the civilization. Arts and craft produced will give identity to the civilization. The architecture produced by the civilization dignify the civilization. Textile and dress always gave identity to the civilization. As an example, all provinces in India produced saris and they were identified with the name of that province as Kashmir Sari, Manipuri Sari, Hachipurap Sari, Kerala Sari, etc. Their varying identity is because design elements are different, compositions are different, color combinations are different, and at the same time, method of wearing is different. Traditions were never static. They change with the changing needs of the people, changing aspirations of the people, and advancement of technology. In this scenario, fashion design play an important role in the change in society. This is Virajini Karnaratna's research area was mainly to understand the tradition, to bring tradition to modern. The fashion designer must not be an industrial slave driven by commerce. But as a creative designer, must get inspiration from the nature and culture. Every design element from form, shape, structure, composition, color, proportion are all in there in the nature. And the design inspiration, culture is the concept, acceptance and practices of a society. Professor Virajini Kharpratna, as the speaker today, will bring this message across. Her inaugural lecture is titled as Diving into Traditional Costume Fashion, a Discourse on Our Heritage. As a professor in fashion design in the Department of Textile and Other Engineering, she will focus more on how traditional costume became apparent in Sri Lankan cultures significant with Jumi sculpting techniques in their fabric, molds on body, defining the three-dimensional form and how the costume will be explored in terms of an elaborate tradition, blended with visual and cultural expression. A distinctive craftsmanship, which considered one of the living, intangible cultural heritage in Sri Lanka. I hope she will bring new light to the knowledge in the area of fashion and costumes. Professor Virajini Narnatna graduated from the University of Virginia with first class honors, bachelor's degree in fine arts, and she was awarded the first Mr. and Mrs. Bhattara gold medal for most outstanding graduate of this performances and obtaining highest average mark in fine arts at the general convocation held in the year 2000. She was awarded the PhD in integrated design for the thesis, concept and process of the generating and communicating meaning in fashion design from the University of Murphy. Prior to obtaining the PhD, she completed a postgraduate certificate in learning and teaching in arts and design from the University of Arts, London in 2006. Further, she is an artist and won many national and international awards in art competitions. Her research interests span across a wide area of fashion 
fashion theory, cultural tradition, fashion history, traditional dress preservation, sustainable fashion, and dying practices, and fashion uh, consumers, and tradition to modernity. She has published her research in high quality index journal. So far, she has published 22 journal papers, presented research papers in 33 international conferences. She has also authored two scholarly books and co authored one textbook. In appreciation of her research, she was awarded the Research Excellence Award from University of Morocco in 2017. She has rendered her specialized knowledge for many of the national projects on invitation of the government. Today, Mr. Virajini Arunathana will present her noteworthy contribution to research and development in her inaugural exam. Thank you. Dean Faculty of Engineering, Professor Vikram Maharaj, Dean Graduate Studies, Professor Alves, Dean of the other faculties, directors, senior professors, colleagues, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you everybody for being with me today and helping me celebrate this evening by logging on and letting me into your home and workplace. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir, Mr. Ajwati. Emeritus Professor Nimadi Silva for those words of introduction. You are the beacon light of my success in academic career. Thank you, sir, for your compassionate love and kindness to me. Before I begin the lecture, I want to start by saying just how grateful I am for to an educated and visionary parents, both are professionals in education. When my father's sudden demise, just I was just six years old. My loving young mother took hold all of the burden of me and my two younger siblings. She had the wisdom to empower me in a certain way. She is now an eight years and all retired professional and still being the towering pillar of success in every aspect of my life. <laughs> Next, I'm grateful to my loving husband, Lakshita. also would like to tell. Next, I am grateful to my loving husband, Lakshita. He has been a constant in my life. Actually, he gave me confidence for a long time and now also. He has been never a ending source of encouragement or support and exhibited an unbelievable level of patience over the past 20 years. I would like to remind you of my beloved children who along with Lakshita are a constant source of inspiration for me. I love them so much and thank them for bearing me. I also would like to thank all the teachers at school, St. Joseph Solomon Kegol, Maria Deva Girls College, Kuhendal, and University of Peradinia, who paved the right pathway. Thank you all to my colleagues and senior academics of Murat University and other universities in Sri Lanka who have been incredibly supportive. Thank you all. I was I also love my students who were the source of motivation and dynamic energy induced me to broaden up my research and teaching at the UOL. I thank them too. I pay my gratitude to all the former vice chancellors, deans of engineering faculty, and heads of textile department of University of Orotua, and especially former head of the department, Professor Mutiga. Professor Gayatri, my everlasting friend. Her words mean an Lot to me. Thank you for empowering me. Dr. Naduri, Suba, Tanmuji, and Ganga, my best friends, around me always a strength. My love should go to teachers, my artists, especially Ms. Daba who is always behind me in every success step at the Peradil University. I welcome you all. Thank you very much for making me feel so welcome. This inaugural lecture focuses instead of key concepts, definitions, and ideas central to understanding what tradition costume is, 
I argue that how traditional costumes are interplayed by heritage of culture. Academic criticism and discourses of traditional dress in the world is not new, and there is nothing he new here. But very little research has been done on traditional dress in our country, modernizing the features of traditional clothing to build modernity, traditional technology, redesigns the modern dimensions in an inspiration that gives me the vision to the best apparel manufacturer like Sri Lanka. If so, it is obvious that how we adjust our vision of traditional clothing cannot be achieved simply by looking at the clothes externally. The way in which tradition is intertwined with the heritage of our country should be studied as a heritage discourse and take an idea to modernity. Walter Benjamin stated in his essays, Illuminations, in every era, the attempt must be made to wrest tradition away from conformism that is working to overpower it. In other words, he aims to prefer narratives of far less movements and organizations that can serve to open up possibilities of the future rather than confirm received wisdom. I'm going to provide a potted history of my academic career, which has been touched on already by Ananda Kumaraswamy, greatest philosopher in South Asia in the 20th century. He began life as a scientist and attained its coveted heights. He was also an intellect range of many subjects such as patriology, philosophy, metaphysics, music, iconography, philosophy, art, and architecture. One of his essays, Borrowed Plums, which published in Canton in 1905, is an interesting essay that should be read and reread. Now, especially in view of the serious efforts being presently made to reactivate Sri Lanka's cultural heritage. His writings have a vital and vibrant message for nations everywhere who are interested to preserve their moral and cultural integrity. He looked to our own history to guide for further. And this perspective is still applicable today. Kumara Swami called for a reawakened pride in Sri Lanka's past and in the country's cultural heritage and a reflection of how the nation, nation could be reshaped by those values it upholds rather than those it imitated. His thoughts have made a severe impact on me. It is the development of my academic career and the twists and turns that I have taken that has obviously shaped my work to this point. So I hope you will know some of the personal biography which is interwoven with my argument. Now, I am starting in developing the argument. I would like to note two broad areas that shape my research approach and to academics, study and research. These areas are spanned broadly across costumes and fashions, namely semiotics and sustainability, where I have taken inspiration from critical pedagogy in particular, and of course, finally, traditional costume fashions of Sri Lanka which is the area that I am working in my research, of course. Let's go back to my PhD studies. I would always be really interested in philosophy in fashion and those classic yet often thorny debates concerning the meaning of fashion. The virtue of communication ability of fashion costumes and how the meaning encoded and decoded in terms of understanding costume clues and so on. I also began to explore a lot about costume fashion in terms of wealth of research, also about its history, its culture, as the discourse that shape how academic in the field of fashion perceive the role and how important education is to development of, the, of an academic identity. Working with my PhD supervisor, Professor Nimal, introduced me to cultural communication and the study of how politics, hegemony, is mediated in fashion more generally. I was originally keen on focusing the most of the works of Roland Barthes, selected work of Ferdinand de Saussure, John Dealey, Charles Sanders Pierce, and work of Ito. Standard, 
understand the discourses of fashion and costumes. Furthermore, I really enjoyed and fascinated reading about classical civilization like Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians, their costumes and lifestyle in my undergraduate degree at Peradini University. So I wanted to continue that line of inquiry. Semiotics means the interpretation of a culture science, remembering that just about everything may be taken as a sign, but analyze the translation of clothing into language. He observes rather wistfully, man is doomed to articulated language without discourse. He says there is no fashion, and this may be an overstatement, for it suggests that the object itself, the natural garment, has no interest. As if he suffers from the uncontrollable hunger for lust for eating, fashion is least literally when dealing with the garment itself. It preserves the luxury of connotation of the world for the garment as well. I was awarded the PhD for the title of my thesis, The Concepts and Processes of Generating and Communicating Meanings of Fashion. After my doctoral studies, this led to me first proper research which led to three book publications in fashion, art, tradition, and how natural dyes are sustainable in tradition. In the field of fashion, I which drew extensively on my experiences and work, work, working on historical and contextual studies at the OMB. Fashions of royalty in the court period looked at how costume fashions are an integral factor of any culture. Fashions are also changing like <laughs> other aspects of material culture. Fashion oriented studies on this subject are rare. Fashion means cultural artifact. Function of fashion elucidates the elite or less fashion creators. It is true that the status, power, prestige of royals and elites are associated with their mode of dress and costume fashions. Art and Tradition of Sri Lanka. This project looked at exposition of the historical aspects of different forms of dancing in Sri Lanka. Dance forms are important for human society in influencing the way people engage in creative activities. By encouraging the viewers to spend time looking at forms, each way an unending interaction, the book informs that dance can be defined as a cultural form that results from the creative process which manipulates human bodies in time and space, and how costumes plays a pivotal role in dance. The book inquires into the cultural and social context of costume design. Further, discuss how the form of costume, proportion, texture, gravity, style, shape, and length have been utilized successfully in dance costume. The Buddhist role. Part pointing to the natural dyes and possible to establishment of natural dyeing industry in the apparel sector of Sri Lanka. There was not much research on traditional practices on natural dyes of Sri Lanka. So this was a really good opportunity to talk about what we did and actually try to make a mark. It would be also enable me to work with my practitioner colleagues, Shailas, Professor Samudjika and Professor Gayat. This project looked at the versatile nature of Buddhist monastic robe, the possibility of seed spread to a windbreak. The rope is taken as an example for resource cascading and indicates the relevance of the concept to a sustainable society. Dyes and color and colors of all things perhaps attract the textile to the user. As such significant quality parameters are involved today when dyes are applied and their efficiency is assessed. The epitome of this book contains how we are to address this emerging problem in what the book is tackling in an innovative manner. Going back to nature, the Buddhist robe never left nature and 2,005 years later, still the practice is followed. Strengthened by tools of today, there is an opportunity for an eco-industry, an ocean of knowledge. This is being a pot of water collected thus is thus is expected to quench the thirst of many are uh, desperate for knowledge in this area. The Buddhist robe introduces to the reader sustainability aspect of a robe of a Buddhist monk.
taking that lessons, the reader says tries to try to multitude of dyes and colors coming from flowers, roots, wood, bark, and stem, etc., for a brand new industry for Sri Lanka. Let's come back to one approach to academic study and research. The concept of sustainability, behavior patterns of people in society and their action take place for consuming goods impact on the environment sustainability. People are guided not only by themselves but also by others in and around society. Therefore, a new era has come back to come look back to ancient consumption of sustainable dress practices. Traditional costumes show tremendous draping systems that can be adopted with the modern touch also for attitudinal practice as beginning groundwork of good practices. Moving away from mass consumption of dresses, cultural practices, making the costume by using maximum usage of textile. Sustainable fab fabric cutting method like zero waste technique, concept of one piece garment, and the range of skills and resources that are available to us. The technique of traditional costumes making use of fabric optimally and many variations exist within the different upper body frill collar jackets, known as Mante Hattie. Except I examine zero waste design, a traditional linear cutting method practiced during the Kantian period, as the geometry pieces were used, leaving no negative space around the pattern. Design activity that result in zero waste garment. This method involves designers to realize the body form as a three-dimensional sphere and suggest experimenting new ways. The designing process of these outfits in encompasses the pre-consumer zero waste stage where an initial production eliminates the waste. The jacket has a detachable collar that is shows that is utilized the geocut method and geometrical blocks. It was observed that these jackets almost employ only two seams for joining the rectangle body pieces. And the re by reducing the number of seams used in the construction of garments leads to eliminating the garment manufacturing time and reducing energy consumption and labor. The process of female jacket modeling requires special technical skills. Type of seams and stitches were adapted to sewing trade pieces of fabrics, where our clothes were connected with minimal seams allows for the sake of fabric economy and aesthetics. The collecting zines also served as symbolic and decorative elements. The bodies of the jackets were made mostly, mostly of one piece of fabric. The conversity is explained not only by the predominance in manual labor, but also by, by the special attitude to clothing of the people who lived in the not so distant past. Historical material provide evidence of the long persistence. The current consumption and the aesthetic preferences of the consumers are on uns unsustainable ground. And a new ethical consumer culture, radical changes towards sustainability are needed. Green aesthetics offer the possibility to combine environmental values and aesthetic experiences. Subtle draping system of dress practices, which were widely utilized by the elite subsequently, shows tremendous draping systems that can be adopted with the modern touch and also for attitudinal practice as beginning groundwork for good practices. Move away from mass consumption of dress inspiring rich cultural practice and all show the range of skills and resources that are available. Recognition of clothing as a concept of fashion is not coincidental. However, the expression of an interest for the fashion of humans and being different from each other is visible through holding of the fabric of the body. It is realized that sustainable fashion stands against fashion igloo routine. The fashion promote sustainable mission today have been 
focusing their designs to zero waste approach in fashion. Zero waste fashion means no waste or little waste in cloth production. Pieces of patterns considered in historical clothing show that less fabric waste in the process of making dresses. <coughs> Oporia are considered as traditional dress in which a long piece of cloth is draped and wrapped around the body and made into dress. This dress form is peculiar because it is made without cutting the material and without being stitched. These are the best existing zero waste design concepts in the world. Sustainable fashion consumption does not need to consider isolating, but it as a practice that exists in the co connection with a network of social practices. Furthermore, sustainable fashion consumption involves various cognitive techniques, embodied knowledge, meanings, and material artifacts. The draping of natural clothing is a challenge, not only in art, Various complexities in the mechanical behavior of the material are quite naturally represented. In all visual representation work, assume that the fibers in the fabric do not stretch significantly when a cloth is simply draping under its own weight. It has been clear that woven materials have unique properties that allow them to distort in ways expressively different from other fabrics. When allowed to cloth drape naturally, it produces characteristic draping structures. This level of information provides us with insight into the free draping behavior of sample. Baby clothes by producing asymmetric draping force that suggests the clothes is stiffer in wrap direction. Attributes of clothing can be explored by the material's internal resistance to bending, the sharpness of the edges and the corners of the lower dresses. The designers ex explore many avenues of wrapping the cloth around the body and it is ability to be shaped and creased. Let me introduce the importance of living in traditional costume fashions and why are and why there is a need to have a discourse in our heritage. Historical notions of traditional values of costume fashions in the heritage sector have been identified by holders of curatorial expertise based at institutions with large collections of artifacts. However, the rise of new digital technologies has facilitated not only active to way engagement with heritage, but also a broadening of what we mean by heritage and how it can be assessed through the co-production of exhibitions, oral histories, other forms of display and archive based on personal remembrance, recollections and interactivity. What is tradition? Tradition is accumulated wisdom of the past. Tradition is virtually connected with such notions of modernity, rationality, memory, history and ideology. I was tantalized by reading Edward Shields stating that I was tantalized by reading Edward Shields stating that tradition means many things. In its rarest, most elementary sense, it means simply a traditum. That is, it is anything which is transmitted or handed down from the past to the present. Human actions are vehicles by which tradition is transmitted. The concept of tradition seeks to enforce certain values and assumptions and modes of behavior. It is also regarded as a transgender phenomenon and it is seen to be endowed with certain timeless qualities. The Latin word tradi conveys the meaning of delivery, handing down knowledge. So tradition could be understood as the idea of handing down ideas, objects, practices, assumptions, and values from generation to generation. Heritage is incredibly being seen as linked to discourses and discursive practice. Probe into the discursive production of heritage and analyze how such reproduction manifests on the global, local interface to critically grasp what is heritage, is centers in the present, how local settings, historical events, 
and diverse cultural traditions affect and use it. The notion of discourse developed by Michael Foucault. He attempted to argue that nothing has any meaning outside of discourse. Discourse, according to him, is made up of three parts. Social practice, discursive practice, and text. Discourse, on the other hand, refers to systematic means of talking about and interpreting the world. And it governs what can be said through various equipment and organizations. So regulating the manner in which meanings are circulated and consumed. The heritage should be viewed as a discursive practice. It is one of the ways in which the nation, nation gradually builds a collective social memory for itself. Individuals and families create identities by storing the myriad of random episodes, contained and turning points of their lives into single, coherent narrative, and nations do the same by binding their selected and high points and notable achievements into an evolving national story. This is what is known as tradition as well. If we argue with Bodier, one can limitations. One can, within limitations, influence the work by transmitting its representation. We should work to change not only how other researchers talk about heritage, but also how we talk about it ourselves. Traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge is one of the key characteristics of traditional posture. It is defined by UNESCO as the knowledge, innovations, and customs of indigenous and local groups all over the world. Traditional knowledge is passed down orally from generation to generation based on the centuries of experience and adaptations to the local culture and the environment. It typically takes place shapes of stories, songs, folklore, proverbs, cultural values, beliefs, rituals, community regulations, and local language. The majority of traditional knowledge is of a practical nature. Traditional knowledge encompasses in costumes are traditional dye methods, traditional sewing methods, fabric cutting methods and clothing manipulation methods, such as draping, wrapping, twisting, pleating, and creasing methods. By attaching multiple suspended poles around the torso, it was also possible to portray dynamic movement of the dress. The last one of the, the last one used enormous coils of fabric to conceal the body. As a result, the Sri Lankan dress characteristics is more than a covering. It gives the object an anthropomic worth. Until it is arranged, the dress is uncertain. It's dynamic, thus it conjures up everlasting fashion ideas. The emergence of an object as an accepted costume fashion in society is a complex and multifaceted behavioral process. Furthermore, fashion process is considered as an interacting behavioral system characterized by basic elements. The adopters or the individuals accept the fashion object in their day-to-day -day lifestyle or behavioral patterns. According to the UNESCO Convention of 1972, heritage refers to the cultural legacy we inherit from the past, live in the present, and past on to the future generations. Cultural heritage, on the other hand, is not restricted to monuments and collections of artifacts, oral traditions, performing arts, social manners, rituals, celebratory events, knowledge and practices relating to nature and universe, and information and methods related to traditional craft and costumes are all examples of living expressions inherited from our forefathers. Cultural legacy, on the other hand, has become commercially significant for many countries, tourism sectors. This also presents new conservation challenges.
the social and cultural milieu on which some traditional costumes relying on survival has changed dramatically with the passage of time. And all cultural aspects have increasingly lost their competitiveness in the modern market economy. As a result, putting in place effective conservation in tangible cultural heritage has become a priority at this time. Meanwhile, use characters, records, video, and other digitized multimedia approaches to authentic authentically, comprehensively, and systematically record this area of intangible cultural heritage. I realize the traditional costume fashions are subject to concurrent socio-political factors. Development feature on traditional costume challenge its definitions. I observe some modifications of the dress features. It is realized that due to globalization and technological advancement, the community experiences, economic changes, and its artifacts lose in purity and authenticity in traditional costume. Furthermore, it is also revealed to me that the physical features of the dresses are modified. I also observe that some dresses may have new forms of while keeping with traditional culture. My observations on traditional costume is considered as part of a dynamic culture. I think the costumes are unaccountable to be pretentious by the changes that happen inside culture. It was revealed to me that meanings and usage of traditional costume therefore change with the passage of time. Reconstruction and repackaging of ideas about culture. Costume history collections are critical for preservation, yet noticing a lack of research on preservation of cultural costume. Me as the principal investigator and my two colleagues, Professor Gayatri and Sulari, as co-investigator, recently finished three video documentaries production to bridge the gap. I would also take this opportunity to give my gratitude to Professor Gayatri and Sulari. Thank you very much for making this and such exciting yet challenging and enjoyable project to work on. We presented the two presentations in the conference in Bali 2018. Completing these projects was really challenging. These video documentaries provide us with an insight into past and present day pink clothes on the human body, acting as snapshots of unique dress forms of Sri Lankan culture. These videos can be used to inform future conservation of varieties of unique dress forms and diversity as we know it today. We as researchers see how communities have reacted to previous cultural occurrences, providing significance, insight into future outcomes and ensuring that positive diversity is protected. There is a probability to assume that these documentaries may be integrated into the global visual consume databases. We as researchers attempt to visualize the selected costume discussing an angle of a designer, signifying technicality of the unique draping technique to improve sustainable design concept for fashion designers in order to allow them to understand how its pieces of yards of cloth give life to the rhythm of the human body. The costumes that are interpreted in the videos provide important teaching material, expand opportunities for researchers, and improves understanding of delivery and uh, cultural costume. Fashion practice, space and draping tradition. Fashion practice, draping is a technique of addressing the space of the human body. It's a hereditary practice that speaks of a country's golden heritage of upcountry dancing costumes, especially the West costume. Yet today, the beauty of Sri, Sri Lanka's West costume, traditional practice and its state of existence has been subject that has been neglected from the mainstream cultural discourse. Fashion practice presents how the body spaces encompasses Rhythmic draping techniques and make dramatic dress forms has never been discussed in an angle of a designer. However, its pieces of cloth give life to rhythm.
dignified bodies. Extravagant volume and wrapping techniques in candy and any costume is a video documentary about 45 minutes. This video speak about the heritage of the incomparable beauty of the country's upper class dressing up style. The upcountry can be dressing up style of dignitaries, conveys a class and caste based rich fashion traditions of a country's heritage. Elite male and female dresses are showing the system of traditional preserved authority of prerogative powers by making an extravagant male body form. Dignified bodies pass the system of elite dressing systems and admit his dress forms and etiquettes are subject to establishment social stratification, yet to preserve cultural heritage. Ceremonial bodies, cloth wrapping and draping system in tradition, cast insights of social con contribution of artisans and officials who served in the temple of the Tooth Valley, where the prerogative powers and obligation visible through a distincting forms of official costumes which prevails hereditary during feudal systems in the Candian era. This document represents an accountability and necessity of a system of hereditary occupations and services which exhibited distinct task-oriented costumes on certain ceremonies and cultural practices in the temple of the tools, really constitute to this today. Though the traditional dress and its inheritance is being challenged and becoming a threat to such cultural sustainability at various levels with the increasing influence of the free market forces. On the other hand, Increasing secularization of the society alienates traditional forms, uh, their earlier context, and thereby aggravates the risk of the distinctive dress form being carried to the next generation in its original form. Visual and functional features of dresses. So, why do we need to have a heritage discourse? To develop cultural branding. Because of the growing trend of exotism and the rise of Asian economies, there is an increased opportunity. There is an increased opportunity for Asian brands to benefit from cultural heritage branding, particularly for Asian brands. Furthermore, benefits of cultural heritage branding can aid fashion brands, as cultural heritage can provide innovation and originality to designs that are critical to a fashion brand's competitiveness. Japanese designers like Isemiyake, Junia Watanabe, and Reika Okubo, Indian designer Manish Arora, built their brand around their country of origin and cultural significance. Isemiyake considered his own cultural history to be a source of inspiration. He emphasized the importance of combining heritage and modern technology. In the early stages of the brand history, Isemiyake used the kimono as the source of inspiration. He took the traditional elements into kimono and mixed it with modernism and innovation to create new concept. Manish Arora once said that, I have been promoting Indian handicraft through my collections with the idea of making these crafts more popular and influencing people to wear them. Second, they all commonly adapted traditional fabric and textiles to add the traditional touch. Despite the fact that these all cultural heritage fashion labels, the brand's crucial success aspects is their ability to seamlessly blend modernity with tradition. Despite the growing importance of heritage and tradition, it is necessary to reinterpret and process them in a modern context to some extent. Fashion brands have worked hard to strike a balance between modernism and historic characteristics. Nonetheless, there is a disparity 
in the degrees of modernization between the brands. So following are some typical elements of cultural heritage fashion brand. Traditional costume brand prototype, emphasis on the traditional fa fa fabrics, and preservation of traditional craftsmanship. While traditional characteristics were emphasized, striking the best balance of tradition and modernity was also regarded as important. In the year 2015, me and Professor Gayatri designed a project for the major design realization module for term through term three year one, and that seeks to give knowledge about the generalized concept of fashion. The concept suggests that fashion may be conceptualized on two separate dimensions, the fashion object and the fashion process. These dimensions have separate and distinct connotations. The fashion object in consumer behavior theory may be a specific stylistic product and in some cases a technological product functional innovation or a consumer service. As a non-material social product, the object might be any behavioral practice or ideological philosophy. The fashion process is a mechanism of stages by which the potential fashion objects move from its creation to public presentation and public acceptance. In the fashion process, a potential fashion object is introduced to the members of a social system. It is adopted by certain leading individuals, frequently referred to as innovators, and is ultimately diffused to the other social system members to a certain level of acceptance. The, the fashion process represents a dynamic mechanism which the object ultimately emerged as an accepted or rejected fashion. To understand this broad phenomena, selected the tradition as the source of inspiration to produce a novel garment. It forwards the tradition to modernity. At the same time, At the same time, there is a need to identify the style authentication of costume fashions since the style is becoming distinct selling point of fashion in the contemporary fashion arena. The style of fashions not only assist consumers in making fashion decisions, but also to bring them to a good taste in life. In the world of fashion, authenticity is crucial. I argue that tradition and heritage are significant in authenticating a style. It is realized that historical dress inspirations have a direct association with the style authenticity of selected designers like Isamiyake, Kawakubo, and Manish Arora. Creating new fashions is key to product development in the industry. The goal of our video documentaries is to incubate new fashion concepts from traditional costume identified fashion qualities into future. The creative advantage of manipulation benefits designers who can discover new silhouettes and styles irrespective of trends. The first direct determinations of the selected traditional costume, such as analysis of the cut, design of the form, sewing techniques of the costume, had been asked to present the students. What defines fashion is a shockingly large array of styles, which can be put forward as the heart of the fashion concept. However, the concept of style is more concerned with the categorization of consumer products, whereas fashion is concerned with the entire social pattern of differentiation and adaptation. The allure of novelty that fashion offers is mainly aesthetic. The, the project revealed hints of how fashion style can survive with the authenticity in tradition. The dimension of change over time the manifestation of which is the presentation of new alternative fashion objects 
to a social system of potential adopters, ultimately resulted in a shift in popularity from the existing fashion objects to the newly emerging fashion objects. Change is implicit and critical to the fashion process. Change among the individuals adopting and changing the level of acceptance of the various competing fashion objects. More designers are enthusiastically invited to add to the conversation to investigation and discovery to face the stringent requirements of the garment industry. This design project revealed that designing garments by utilizing fabric draping methods is about challenging conventions in order to push practices and shift perceptions about what constitutes creativity. This insight offers a far more creative vista for policy innovation than has hitherto been recognized. I conclude my speech by quoting Professor Ganana Tobesekara's keynote address delivered on Sociology Day in 2015 at the University of Peradine. We can and must re remain researchers looking intensively at a small silver or species existence and then open up their discourse to live existence in the general. But obviously we have to invent other strategies as we move from studying segments of opening our lives to larger discourses. I would not have been able to deal with such work without the inspiration from my own cultural imagination. As I write this, I am still at work opening up my life to areas that I have thus far neglected. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Virajini. Now, I cordially invite Professor Narendra Kamalachi to present a token of appreciation to our speaker. Of course, uh, I would like to thank Professor Virajini for uh, taking us uh, through that uh, very troubled journey through the uh, history of fashion right down to the modern times, of course, uh, with lessons for the modern, not only uh, for modern fashion design, but also for modern product design as well. Thank you very much, Professor Gandhini. And there is a small uh, token of gift for you. Thank you very much. So that we will end the inaugural lecture number seven. So we will meet in another lecture like this in the month of April. Thank you.